I'm Jess. I'm from Ilian, New York. Anna has Ewing sarcoma. And as of June, this past June 16th, she finished her last chemo and had her set of scans and was pronounced NED. And we will go September 24th for her next set of scans. And hopefully we'll be set and can do a port removal and continue on with her life. Well, it was, it was a shock. You know, we, Anna had just gotten done with softball season and she was complaining about upper thigh pain. And as most parents, you know, we thought, okay, she might have pulled something. Maybe she's dehydrated. And we expected to go take her for an x-ray for them to tell us, oh, something's pulled for them to say, okay, your daughter might have. And then it's like a whirlwind. Like a lot of parents, you know, I've talked to say the same thing. It's like you go through different emotions. It's like you're, you're freaking out because your kid might have cancer and then you find out they have cancer and then it's not the end. And then it's, you have to then find out what type it is. You have to find out if it is metastasized, if it's localized, if it's in the bone marrow. And it's like a roller coaster of waves of all these emotions. You know, you get, you get sad because you found out you have cancer and then you get excited because you find out it's not metastasized through your body and it's not in the bone. And it's just, it's just, emotion after emotion and it's very very stressful and it's a lot of a lot of waiting we we live about an hour and a half away from where she got her treatment and i am a teacher assistant so my school was very accommodating and allowed me to take the the year off last year to be with her um because her her chemo was a lot and like every week she was having chemo pretty much. So we did a lot of travel. We did a lot of stays at the Ronald McDonald house. And thankfully the whole COVID wasn't happening. So Carter, you know, I have a three-year-old son. He was allowed to be there every stop of the way with us while my husband continued to work and provide. So that way I can take care and bring her back and forth to treatment. Throughout the chemo, I didn't really feel anything. But a few weeks after I would get really sick in the beginning and like more towards the end I got used to it so it wasn't as bad for me. Her roadmap consisted of one week she would go for two days outpatient the following week she would have a one day outpatient and then the following week she would go inpatient for five days of straight chemo and then she'd have a week off and then she would do it all over again. And we did that for about 52 weeks. So we, we barely were time where there was no chemo or no sicknesses because it was just, it was constant, constant of uh, medication stuff that she was taking. And then, you know, with the radiation added into it, it was, it was a lot. One advice I would give kids going into chemo is not to be scared but you will get sick your stomach a lot. She had aromatherapy come in and help her create her own scent, and they made like a little, like a Vicks inhaler kind of thing. She had that help her stay on the medications. She would try to fight because she hates taking it, so she'd be like, I don't need it, and then she'd realize it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. how did, I mean, how did you feel? I was like sad and scared. I think a big thing for her is we had the support system. We live in a very small community, a very great community, and everyone was just so welcoming and accepting of her in her school that she was comfortable to be herself and she was comfortable to not worry about losing her hair because she knew no one was going to treat her any differently. And I remember she, she had, you know, was asked if she wanted a wig. You know, she had foundations ask her if she wanted a wig, and she said, I don't need it. I'd rather save them for the kids that don't get that support like I do, and that needs it for that. And she just, she rocks the bald. Fam has helped us just in every way because with this foundation, it's different than a lot of the others because it's every stages. You don't have, okay, your kid has cancer, we're gonna donate to you, let that be that. No, there's 
all difference that you have people in this that are one year out and cancer free. You have people that are just beginning. So it's just a support group and a means to like go on and say, okay, I'm having this trouble and other people relate. We live in a world now where unless you're through it, no one understands what you're going through. No one understands how you feel as a mom, as a dad, as a sibling, as the patient itself, unless they're through it. And it's just a group of people that know what we're going through, that can relate, that know all the feelings that go through us. And everyone can say, oh, I understand. It's, it's different when you talk to someone who's been there, you know, and, and, and it's your kid. You know, the worst thing is when someone says, oh, my, yeah, my grandmother had cancer. It's not the same, you know. So when you can rely on people to talk to them about their children with cancer and they know what you're going through and to have that support and also to have someone who is just looking out for our children and want to make them happy because they know they're going through something very hard that no kid should have to go through. And that alone is, is so huge because it's, it's a hard world. It's a hard world. You know, we live not just with our, with our own kid, but you grow attachments, you grow families, and it's a world where you never know one day to an ex who's still going to be there. And we live where it's a lot of loss and a lot of pain. So to be able to be part of it, to run it, to be behind the scenes of it, everything. It's, it takes strong people to be able to really organize and run an organization that is strictly about children. It's nice to meet other kids with cancer, so just to know like I'm not the only one and stuff. But that has also helped me when I was doing donations for other kids going to cancer. They helped me get more stuff to do that, to donate. From every step of the way, from her first time, she got a chemo bag. And she said, Mom, what is this? And I explained to her. I said, you know, it's a chemo bag. It's things that other people who've gone through what you've gone through help make to make it more comfortable while you're getting treatment. And from then, she expressed wanting to give back. And we started initially with her doctor um, had a bunch of her residents had a lot of grant money left. So they came in and I think she was only like in her fourth week of treatment and all the residents came in and they sat her down and, exp you know, she explained what she wanted in her chemo bags and they went out, bought all the stuff with their grant money. And then her next five day, they set up a big room and we had a big, huge chemo bed making party with all the stuff that she wanted and they called it Honest Strong and they brought it, you know, into the hospital. So that way when new patients came in, they got an Honest Strong chemo bag with stuff that she thought they could need. And then it, it just, it, it grew. And then, you know, she wanted to do the, the gifts for the hospital because a lot of thing that is overlooked is the outpatient clinics that these kids go to. People don't realize these kids go do outpatient chemo. They're there all day long. And she wanted to have them have arts and crafts, toys to play with, keep their mind occupied while they were getting their chemo. And that's what she did. She went and did that. And, you know, we like to donate to the Ronald McDonald house. We, you know, we did that as well. One of the TVs were broken in the, the living room of the Ronald McDonald house. And so we, she's like, well, we need to give back. And it's just, you have to, I know for me, when everything started, it was weird for, for me to have all these people want to help because at first I'm like, no, like that's my kid. It's my job to protect and provide and stuff. And it was actually my doctor who said, listen, Jess, you have to accept it. You have to understand you're going to go through the longest, hardest road of your life and you don't know what it's going to do to you. I've seen it. You have to learn to accept it. And I did. But for me, I have to give back along the way 
to be able to accept. It's just, it, it's how I am. Like, I feel like I have to do for others because we are so grateful for all the stuff that's been happening for us because of Anna that we want to give back as well. And it's our way of saying thank you to everyone that has helped us along the way by giving back and paying it forward. The reason I give back to other kids is because I know what it's like for them. It's scary at first and like, it makes you really sad. So the chemo bag and stuff bring like smiles to your face. So I want to do that for other kids. Right now when I grow up, I want to be a radiologist. Um, Why? To help kids in need. Do you have like someone that helped you that you're like, oh, that's I want to do that exact job? I guess as a radiologist. Can you talk about her and your experience like when you met her? They were really nice. Um, every time they would come in, they brought a smile to my face. Just like when they sent me out to get radiation, they would always make jokes. make you laugh and stuff. They're there to help you, but they are also there to help you have a smile on your face at the same time. Sketch pad after sketch pad, just show sit. my edits on my phone that I make. Yeah. She loves to edit stuff. Um, when we were down, you're showing them the bird one? Mm -hmm. um, they took the picture of her holding the birds and she just likes to play around with it and see what different things that she can do. Here, I need a silhouette. Go back up there. She loves that stuff. Just playing. And then what is the other thing, like with the vi putting together videos and like transitioning from one screen, you know, one picture to the next? Is that what they call it? Oh. She's coming like, Mom, look at, my, look at my video. Watch the transition. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? <laughs> How, and I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, how things come in and they go out and then the music, you got to make sure the music hits with the B and it has to be on point. One thing with Anna is she pulls people in. It's just, I, I get in awe because she just has that charisma where people just fall in love with her. And just her person, she takes a little bit. She takes a little bit. She gets shy. But when she opens up, she just has a way where she makes people not forget her. That's what, you know, and I remember, I remember talking to Maria and, uh, and I was telling her, I said, I said, you know, I, I feel like she's going to hit it off with a lot of the kids. I said, but just to warn you, she will be shy at first, but she'll open up. And I remember when we were down eating pizza the first night and I was sitting with my husband, I looked over the table and she was just smiling on her face and just having fun and opening up and it was it was the fastest I've ever seen her open up and I, I think a lot of it has to do with being around kids who understand her and she had a ball it's scary at first it's scary but you don't you can't be scared of it the nurses that are there are there to help you not to scare you as a, a mom or a dad or you know, accept the help, have the support, understand that there's a lot of emotions behind it. And it is, it's going to be the hardest thing you're going to do. As a parent, to watch your child have to fight for their life is the hardest thing in this world. And we, there's so many, there's so many kids that are doing it. And it's just, damn, I knew it. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy, like, to see all these kids. And you don't know the life we live. And it changes you. You know, little minor things that you used to worry about mean nothing. When I have to watch my child at points wither away, and get so sick and not know if she's going to see her next birthday 
if she's going to see her next holiday. And that's not just, you know, it's all these parents that have these, these children. It's just amazing to watch them fight and, and it makes everything so insignificant to watch these kids fight for their life with so much heart and always with a smile and always with the best attitude. It just makes everything else. And (laughs) <laughs> you know, and it's just, they truly become your warriors and they become your heroes. And you get proud of your children. You're proud of your children no matter what. But when you see them go through something like that, you're beyond amazed. And it's just great to have other people to rely on, to know that they have your back they have a shoulder to cry on, they have an ear to listen because they have been there. And that's amazing. And it's not about what you can what you can get out of it, what you can benefit because that's meaningless. I would give everything away that we owned if I could make my child 100% healthy to never have to go through that. And that's what people They want to be catty and then say, oh, you know, it must be nice to be able to do what you're doing and take it. Really? Because I don't know if my child's going to make it one day to the next. And it's not about that. To us, we don't care. Some of us, I should say, we don't care about the materialistic or what can be done for us. All we want is a healthy child. All we want is our children to see their future. And we want them to grow up and live a meaningful life and a happy life. And we are now living in a world where we see that some kids don't get that. And what people don't realize is what FAM does, not just in the emotional aspect, is they're doing things for kids because they realize some of these kids don't have a future, so let's give them the best life while they have it. And that should be the only focus. It shouldn't be about jealousy of what one gets one the next because you don't know their story. You don't know what they're going through, what their needs are. If people just focused on the, it's just the children. It, let's just be there for the children. Let's make them smile. Let's make them healthy because they're the ones going through it. They're the ones who are going through the sicknesses. They're the ones going through the pain not us. And we need to make them smile and them happy and do what's best for them. I am Jess, also known as Anna's mom. I'm Ariana, also known as Anna. And together together we are fighting all monsters. If the monsters come and you need a hand.